Yeah, one word, uh, Sarah, it's Apple. I mean, if you think about it, you just quoted the Dow. I don't look a whole heck of a lot at the Dow, but you look at that's the largest component, um, you know, in the S&P 500. It's not the largest component in the Dow, but it's having um, its way back to break even here. And it looked a little nasty. You know, this stock had been this week, in my opinion, a real leading indicator about where the broad market was going to go. We had a day, I think it was yesterday, when the stock was down, you know, a couple percent when the major indices were unchanged. It was just telling me that investors are starting to get around to some of the stocks that they were holding on to very dearly, but at some point we're looking to raise some cash and that was the last place to do it. One stock that is not making a comeback today is John Deere, heavy equipment yeah. maker, beating Wall Street estimates, but the company missed on revenue because of weaker than expected sales of tractors and other small agricultural machinery. Our Seema Modi joins us. Seema, over the last year, John Deere has managed supply chain issues pretty well. Right. And the stock has outperformed. It's, it's been a best beneficiary of all the tightness in the markets for agriculture. So what happened? Sarah, you're right. This was a surprise miss from John Deere. It's been regarded as one of those industrials that has been able to manage supply chain and inflation issues much better than its competitors. This quarter, a different story. Over a billion dollars of inventory in-house, inability to procure the parts that it needs, leaving it with incomplete machinery. Uh, the demand story does remain strong. Yes, farmers are feeling the pinch with fertilizer prices up, but its backlog suggests orders are there. The smaller tractor business. This is t tends to be a bit more tied to the housing market. People sitting on a lot of land. They like those lawnmowers you can sit on. Uh, Deere says that market, though, is being impacted by higher interest rates. Uh, the stock now on pace for its worst day in two years, Sarah. So, yes, the market may be off the lows of the session, but this stock's still down about 11 percent with a price-to-earnings ratio of 15 times, which is back to levels not seen uh, again since 2020. Do you buy it, Dan? Down 11.2%? Nope. No. Why? Nope. No, and you don't buy this. You don't buy Cisco. You don't like those. Those are two negative revenue reports here. And you know, again, I think the way that you just kind of segue that to SEMA is really interesting. These are companies that have managed the supply chain issues pretty well. Here's another one that has done that. Tesla. You remember that report that they had about a month ago? Well, they're not likely to do that again in this current quarter. And we've just seen one prominent analyst at Morgan Stanley uh, raise the red flag on that. Another name, Apple, that we just okay. talked about. They manage supply chain issues issues pretty well in that last quarter. Not likely to happen here in the Q2. But here's the thing. If we keep saying that demand's good, okay, well, let me tell you something. What I took away from Target this week is that consumer demand is changing right before our eyes here. And whether we want to recognize it or not, I just think that, you know, if you're going to give these companies the benefit of the doubt, when we've just had about six major U.S. companies uh, you know, disappoint on for a whole host of different reasons, and you want to explain it away on inflation and supply chain issues, I think you're doing this game wrong a little bit. So to me, I think we're probably closer to the start of these sorts of warnings than we are to the end of them.